The Strain is by far one of the most underrated vampire franchises to exist. It consists of three novels, a comic book series and a wildly successful TV show that spanned the course of four seasons. It really bugs me that it doesn't get the recognition it deserves because it really does portray vampires in a way that many of us believe they should be. A parasitic plague-like creature that basically uses the human body as nothing more than a shell. No love stories, no sparkly skin, no inner torment at what they've become. The Strigoi are exactly what they are painted to be, killers. The most notable Strigoi of the series is the one they call the Master. The Master is the main antagonist and I have to say, his character is incredibly well written. I love that the actual writers of the novel trilogy were the creators of the show, which means they know the characters that they've created better than anyone else. So this in turn for me delivers a fantastic line of consistency between the books and the show. Now today's video is going to be all about the life of the master. We're going to take a look at his beginnings and basically everything he did in order to achieve his current position in the storyline. The Master is one of the seven original Strigoi known as the Ancients and actually has no name, simply called the Seventh as he is the youngest and seventh born of the Ancients. Now I will be talking about the Ancients in a separate video but just to summarize on their creation, they are the offspring of sorts from the fallen Archangel Osriel, whose body was cut into seven pieces as punishment for his bloodlust and brought to all corners of the earth. Four in the old world and three in the new. As they were part of one being, they shared one mind but could also block each other from accessing what the other was thinking. The only one to do that was in fact the master. Being born in the new world which was underdeveloped at the time, the master made his way to join the other ancients in the old world where he resided with them for some time. However, when the colonization of the New World became apparent, he refused to travel with the Six and broke away from them as his ideologies greatly differed from theirs, in particular the gift of immortality. The ancients viewed the worm as a gift to be bestowed only upon the worthy as they left the mind of the individual intact, whereas the master when bestowing the worm to whomever he chose did not allow them to retain free thought. Thomas Einkorst was one of the few exceptions to this rule, followed by Kelly Goodweather, but that was only so the Master could get to Ephraim. Now that's something we'll talk about in another video. So the Master seems to be the only one of the Ancients not to retain his original body, taking on a number of hosts over the millennia. He would change bodies through the passing of the Crimson Worm. The master would take hollowed soil from his casket and force it into the host's mouth. He'd then regurgitate the worms within his current body, projecting them at pace into the person's mouth along with the soil from moments previously. As soon as the crimson worm enters the host, it takes control of the brain and body. Like any Strigoi, the master must go through the change from human to vampire when he changes host unless of course the host he takes is already a fully developed Strigoi. He is approximately 5,000 years old and is incredibly powerful. He has the ability to see through the eyes of anyone he's infected with the worm, has incredibly enhanced strength and speed and is able to resist sunlight longer than any other Strigoi, sunlight being their biggest weakness. Just on a side note guys, I will do a video on the Strigoi alone. All of their strengths, weaknesses, how they infect hosts, how the stinger works, all of that. So please don't think I'm leaving any of that out. I just believe it deserves its own detailed video, whereas today's one is just about the actual lifespan of the master himself. So let's continue. As I said previously, the master has had a host of human bodies over the course of his lifetime, but the most notable is that of Polish nobleman Józef Sardu who suffered from gigantism and needed a walking cane. While this was a challenge for Yusuf in his disabled body, the master's possession of it took it from a weakness to a massive strength as the healing factors of the worm eradicated all genetic issues, leaving an incredibly large and intimidating Strigoi in its place. 
He remained in this body for well over a century, close to 150 years as he went about devising a plan to enslave humans and establish a society of Strigoi with a long-term goal to achieve global domination. This didn't come as easy as one would expect as despite the master's power, he still had enemies who wished to stop him, most notably his half-human son Quindlin and Abraham Satrakian. Quinlan, a human born from a pregnant woman infected with the worm of the master, had all the strengths of the Strigoi without the weakness of sunlight. He was a deadly skilled assassin who had been hunting the master for centuries. The master refused to face him and fled on every encounter. Quinlan's constant threat really hampered any plans the master had up until his most recent success with the quarantine of New York. Satrakian, on the other hand, used a more tactical approach, trying to acquire artifacts that the Master would use for his advantage, the Oxido Lumen, for example. The Master thrived on breaking his enemies down piece by piece rather than killing them. If we stay with Abraham Satrakian, for example, the ancient Strigoi took everything from him, his livelihood for starters, as the Doctor became obsessed with the hunt. He turned his wife into a Strigoi of which Abraham still kept her worm infested heart in the fluid jar. The master did the same to Quinlan, infecting his human wife and adopted daughter, striking him where it hurt. Both Quinlan and Abraham learned one valuable lesson. Have no friends, have no family, do not create relationships or bonds with anyone of any kind. It is a life of solitude if one is to hunt the master successfully. His plan for domination finally came into fruition when he centered New York as ground zero. The master's seven steps were as follows. 1. Catastrophic failure of the internet which was successfully carried out by hacker Dutch. 2. Transport of his own casket to Midtown Manhattan, crossroads of the world. This was done by Gus. 3. Alliance to Eldridge Palmer, which was engineered through Thomas Einkorst. This ensured the master had an endless amount of wealth. 4. Attempted acquisition of the Oxido Lumen, which ultimately failed but it didn't really matter in the end. 5. Transfer of his consciousness to the host Bolivar, as he was gravely injured from the sun damage. 6. Mass murder of the city's high level financial executives, which in turn led to the ruin of the banks and the hoarding of precious metals, especially silver, the bane of the Strigoi. If silver is scarce, then there is no real efficient weapons against the Strigoi. 7. Build out of the massive processing plants for the extraction of human blood. This would mean the blood was readily available instead of hunting. Throughout these seven steps, the master infected a massive portion of New York, which seen the entire city be quarantined. By the time the actual threat of the Strigoi had been properly and widely accepted, it was far too late as all of the city had fallen under the control of the master. I'm going to leave it there for now guys. If you'd like to see part 2 of the life of the master, then let me know in the comments section below. Thanks again for watching, I really appreciate all of you joining me on this journey with Vampire Folklore. We've just surpassed 1000 subscribers, so let's see where this channel can go. Thanks again for watching, have a great day and I will see you all in the very next video.